Hey everyone, and welcome back. I have in front of me, uh, oh, my lighting has changed. Hopefully it doesn't ruin anything. Uh, four packages, but some of them have more stuff in them, and I really need some of the stuff in them, so it's time for another mailbag. This one here is a special one from my last podcast guest, Steph Piper. You should go uh, check out that episode. This probably has the most interesting stuff in it, so I should open it at the end. But if you promise to hit that subscribe button, I'll open it first. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see if I open it first. It seems like enough of you hit that subscribe button. Uh, some of you didn't and you know who you are. Next time, hit that subscribe button. Uh, so we're going to open this one first. Now, I want to show you the front of this, but I can't because my address is written in massive marker. Uh, so I'm going to have to do this sort of a reverse opening. I don't know if this will work. Uh, huzzah! Ooh, ooh, fancy. Oh, my God. Ooh, and a note. Should we read the note together? Let's see. I'm assuming... Oh, thank you. No, thank you. I'm assuming this is from Steph herself. And she writes... Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Oh, come on. O honestly, the honor is mine. Uh, awesome makers are always welcome on my podcast. Cheers, Steph Piper. So, yeah, this is the stuff that she sells on her Etsy store. And honestly, this stuff is impressive as hell. Um, yeah, I wish I could... I'm going to show it to you, but it won't really do it justice because, uh, you know, pokey little YouTube channel here not exactly pro photography level this is incredible these colors look great i'm gonna get you a close-up give me a second hopefully the colors are rendered perfectly but this is a pcb this you know this is two color solder mask but it looks like it's more than two colors but that's because uh she's pretty clever so you've got this purpley here this color here two different colors of purple uh, and then you have this blue here and you have I believe this is a different shade of blue so basically this one here has copper underneath and this one doesn't that's how she got the two colors this color here is just the bare PCB material and then this here the white that's um, uh, what do you call silk screening so white and one color is typical for a PCB and you can make this you know bare color as well and this gold here is actually um, a coating on top of the copper so you, you got all these colors simply from a multi-process sort of thing and this actually I couldn't really describe it on the podcast but I think her um, her, her explanation that it looks like a uh, enamel pin is actually the most apt so it looks just like enamel, looks really good. And this is a soldering kit. I mean, this is to encourage um, girls, especially young girls, in order to solder, because this is, I mean, this is beginner level. You got a couple solder pads. I'm, I mean, this could be a little bit tricky, the switch. Um, so this is really aimed at beginners, and when they're done, they get this awesome light up uh, pin this is a pin that can pin onto their shirts and and show off the work they've done this is this is awesome i need to come up with something like this it won't be nearly as nice as this but i think there are a lot of my audience that have um, kids and a lot of my audience have daughters as well so i need to come up with some sort of project that'll be a, a beautiful finished product like this it won't be as artsy because I'm not that artsy, but I think it is important to get the youth to start soldering. So this is beautiful. And if you want to get one of your own, uh, you can head on to the description where her Etsy, her Etsy store will be linked. This is another story altogether. I'm also going to try not to damage these because um, I haven't decided if I'm going to build the kit or if I'm going to give it away to get some youngin 
into electronics. I mean, I could build it too, and then it, in, in another way that would advertise. Yes, you can get it off without damaging it. So this is a similar, ooh, fancy look. It's got the ribbons and stuff inside. Maybe I need to adjust the focus here. So this is, yeah, very, it's a similar concept. You've got the, the, the three colors, I guess, because you've got the uh, black solder mask, you've got the gold from the copper, and then you've got the white from the uh, silk screening, but you just don't have that extra process of the, um, you know, solder mask, the extra solder mask. Beautiful. So this, that's actually smaller, you know, it looks huge on the, on the image, but basically you break these apart with, uh, there's mouse bites and this makes a, like a 3D statue. My, I'm not doing this justice, am I? This makes like a 3D statue of like, it's like a cat and it has sort of like, I don't know if this is like tail shaped. I know it has a tail, but it's like, has sort of like a background, you know, like, like this. And it lights up, again, has a component kit in there. Very nice. And it slots together sort of like um, if you guys ever had those uh, those dinosaur kits when you were kids with the little bones you slot together. Look at this too. Wow. Need to zoom you out. Look at that. I mean... This is incredible. It, it turns into uh, like actually professional looking instructions. Look at that. LEDs or light emitting diodes, light sources for your electronic projects. This is cool. Instructions. Yeah, sorry about your, the lights swamping out a little bit, but you definitely have to go look on the Etsy store. This is impressive stuff. I am really impressed. These look way better in person than on the Etsy store, and they look great on there too. Neat. I wish I had someone young to give this to in my life, but who knows? I mean, I can find someone. Either that or I'll just make them and um, show them off when I uh, show off some soldering. Very neat. Thank you so much, Steph, and you guys should go check out um, her Etsy store because this these are awesome and last night when I checked on the podcast live the prices are actually very low for what you get I mean there is hours and hours of work in each of these and obviously uh, makers are typically not compensated correctly for their time um, and I don't think this is any different you should check it out take a look and maybe buy a couple kits. Thanks, Steph. Next one up, and by the way, it's all downhill from here. So um, yeah, if you were just here to look at pretty things, it's over. Um, all right, so next one up is this one, $11.59, January 14th ordered, February 8th arrived. Today it is February, I don't know, 10-ish, nine? Was this, did it, this come in yesterday? I don't know. Oh yeah, these things, actually these are smaller than I thought, so I'm going to have to get you a little bit of a zoom in, but yeah, this is neat. So these are indeed cutting tools, uh, 2x4x50, and I believe that is, actually, you know what, I actually don't know what those numbers stand for. The ad did show them, so I'll probably put them on the screen here, um, but the deal is these are identical end mills and the reason why I ordered these is because Banggood said they were sending me a milling machine. Let me just get the head for you. So I haven't put it together yet but here's the milling motor, the, the mill head and the deal is when you're practicing or when you're messing with these things it's not uncommon to break your tooling and if you don't have one that's identical that fits in there, 
then you're you're not gonna be able to you know try again. This is actually stuck in here. I don't know if it's supposed to be stuck. Uh, but anyways, so it goes into here. This is an ER11. Don't really know what that means. Uh, and it looks like these guys do not fit in here. So I'm gonna have to find the adapter that goes onto the shaft that will take this size. I kind of just guessed I was just gonna get some small ones. And I assume this collet would, you know, fit whatever. I know nothing about CNC. So I was hoping these would work for me. Looks like they will not. So that's interesting. Probably can go into this the kit of parts for this and um, you know get the, the correct V groove thing and measure the diameter. But either way, look, I just wanted a couple of the same ones so my cuts could be repeatable, you know, and I can sort of do it over and over. Also, I'm seeing that the cutting surface is kind of low, so it's not like this thing can make deep cuts. Because even if you try to go in further, you'll notice there's a flange here, right? It's like it's like flanged out, so it can't even go super deep. Hmm. But anyways, these are going to be part of the trial. We're going to take a look and see if they work. But yeah, I need a new... I think it's just the insert that goes inside here that I need to get. I don't know. I ordered these before this arrived, so it's not like I could just take measurements, and the documentation was spotty at best. But here they are now, and now they're in stock. Now I'll be able to play with them. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here. Paid $10.56. January 14th ordered, February 8th arrived. Oh boy. Don't forget guys, there's going to be fewer mailbags going on uh, simply because I don't go back to work for another bunch of months. So it's going to be a little bit skinnier months. That's okay, like I've got plenty of stuff that I can make projects out of. Just the mailbag videos will slow down. Uh, interesting. So these are potentiometers. So let's start. We've got knobs. Okay, so there should be 20 pots in here. It's not too bad, 50 cents each, but I think what's special about these is that they are, uh, the pin spacing is breadboard space, so 0.1 inch pin spacing. But also, there should be, I think there's 100K and 500K, so I'm assuming these ones that are grouped together will be either the 100 or the 500. Let's see. So for those of you that don't know, potentiometers are variable resistors that are adjusted or varied by turning the shaft here. So turn the shaft. Um, but usually they're big and bulky, but I'm kind of liking these guys because they're nice and small. And this is 100K here. So it says B100K on the back of the casing here. So 100K. Let's see if it's also 100K in this one. Or maybe it was just, I don't know. It's not making much sense. Because there's five in here, so five there. There's five in here, that's ten. And if there's ten of these, then that would make sense then. This is B100K as well. So these are ten of the 100K pots. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These must be the 500K. Are they one meg? I don't remember now. Yes, 500K. Okay, so we've got uh, 20 in total. And these are used for lots of things. In this case, they're for a noise-making circuit uh, that was recommended to me on Twitter. So you're going to have to tune in. Make sure you subscribe for that full project because I will be recording it soon. This is why I had to open all these. But yeah, 50 cents a pop of something like that with the knobs. That's not that bad of a deal. You can 3D print these knobs, but I mean... Why bother? You can get it all together. And uh, what's nice about these guys is they are tiny compared to a regular sized one. So they fit on a breadboard really easily and they fit in your circuits really easily if you want to keep them small. So yeah, good to have. Um, links in the description if you want some. 
And the final one is this one. This one has two items in. That's why I kind of, you know, took that Steph Piper awesome one and this one, and that makes a full video, I would think. Um, $8.35 total, um, but the individual one was 108, one was 460, then plus the shipping. So you see, I pay about three bucks in shipping. Um, so yeah, two things in here. Things that I didn't actually know I needed, but it turns out I did for a project. There we go. So, two things. This is a cable chain. This is uh, typically used for uh, 3D printers, CNC type things. So you got uh, both ends. Here on this end, you can see that there are holes. Maybe you can see that there are holes. You can mount it into something. And on the other side too. And then you just run your cables sort of like inside this mesh. And the, the deal is that if you're, let's say it's your print head, print head is allowed to move around like this and it keeps the cables sturdy. Uh, so this is for the 3D printer project. Uh, this is should be long enough, but I mean if it isn't, it isn't something in the world. And then these are bed springs. They're for the hotbed. And they are actually um, the recommended upgrade for sort of like Ender 3 type uh, beds. They're, um, they're a bit stiffer than the stock ones. So um, I think it was a dollar for eight of them. So I figured I'd get eight so I'd have some spares. Um, I did have a method to attach these to the glass bed, but I feel like I'm going to have to rethink it because the middle isn't big enough. I was planning on using uh, these uh, T-nuts, but I don't think that's going to work. But either way, I got two sets, so I can even upgrade the springs on my old 3D printer while I'm at it. So that'll be actually a good upgrade as well. So yeah, springs and this cable track. And uh, don't feel like you need to buy these because you can actually print them. I just didn't want to spend hours and hours printing a uh, cable chain because they were, it was not actually that expensive anyways. And I was, you know, I was ordering from AliExpress anyways. So yeah, this is going to be good because my project is almost done. So I'm going to need this working and then, yeah, need to do the bed design. And that's it. This is today's mailbag video. I want to give a special thanks to uh, Steph Piper. Go check out her uh, Etsy store linked in the description below. Also, go check out her podcast. And in fact, I specifically want you to go check out her podcast episode because it is on my new website. So check out the link in the description. Please go click on there, go listen to a bit of the podcast at least, uh, because I need to know if it works flawlessly. So if you could do that and report back, that'd be awesome, but it is a great episode, so you might as well just listen to the whole thing. Also, I want to thank my Patreon patrons. As you can hear, I'm still uh, quite out of breath. I get um, bouts of dyspnea still from the uh, human malware, uh, and unfortunately it's been getting really bad recently. But my Patreons have said, don't worry about it, take care of yourself, whatever. Um, so I really, I'm really thankful. It's Their support is not just monetary. It's, um, it's really something else altogether. So thank you so much to the Patreon patrons. And if you want to support the channel and don't want to spend any money, and I don't blame you, just share the videos around. When you're on Reddit and someone asks a question that's answered in one of my videos, post my video there and um, tell them, you know, the timestamp. Um, we need to encourage new people to join the hobby. And um, also, if you want to help spread the channel, this is a great way to do it. Thanks for watching.